heard what's going on. Heathcote's, Heathcote's, Heathcote's. This is the Heathcote story, a business that has now been operating for over 70 years and has won numerous awards in recognition of their service. This is a story of vision, of humble beginnings, and an example of Kiwi determination. Heathcote Appliances. In 1884, Thomas Morin laid out a settlement in the central Waikato that became known as Morinsville, which was the birthplace of Heathcote Appliances, originally known as Heathcote and Wills. It all started post-war in 1946, when Clary Wills returned home from the war and got talking to his brother-in-law, Dick Heathcote, about going into business. He was, you know, um, a hard, very hard-working man and uh, those days uh, he was out with his uh, men contracting and uh, it was quite a small business. He was very, very good with his staff. He, um, he was just one of the boys, you know, I can remember that uh, Friday, night, Friday afternoon, Friday night, um, out the back of the workshop um, and half the town there, I think, too, with playing darts and uh, with a few crates, you know, so uh, he was his dad was a real good people's man, and no doubt he was with his customers as well to, to start the business from, from scratch in 46 to, and to get to where he got to. He had a record bar there, he used to sell uh, records and music and guitars and um, yeah, going through the bins and looking at the, the 45s and the, and the, and the 33 and the third album, so you know, the 78s had gone by the time I came around. I got a phone call out of the blue from my father, and then he said, uh, would you be interested in joining the business? And I was quite frankly uh, pretty gobsmacked with that because um, I was happy in my job and uh, the company I was with had, had talked with me about uh, relocating to Sydney. So my comment was, well, I need to have to think about it. Probably more out of family loyalty I made the phone call to my father and said I'll come for 12 months and give it a go. I had ambitions to, to drive and grow the business. I used to make calls every time we went to Auckland, go and see Fisher and Paykel and try and sell myself and uh, beg virtually. And um, didn't very, have very much success. But there came an opportunity, um, there was a business in uh, Morinsville called uh, Hamilton Hardware who had uh, a big store on the corner of Thames and Stutholm Street. I can still remember his name, and Mr Hill. I told him who I was and long story short I negotiated with him while my father was out at lunch and shook his hand at $52,000. and gave the news to my father and the response was where do you think you're getting that money from? Well, my answer was we might have to wait and see. The rest is history, we bought that building and that then enabled me to go to Fisher and Paykel and say I've got a big new building in Morinsville, are you going to make me fill it up with other brands or yours? When we achieve that um, we shifted into another gear. Yeah, well, 91, obviously, we'd ha we had um, Morinsville and Matamata, the stores. I think we, we took over the Matamata store in 87, so we'd had um, the two stores for, for four years. Um, I do remember the, the negotiations going on because um, my wife was Marie was in, in the home with um, with our fourth daughter, and uh, I remember going and telling her that um, there was going to be some. We're looking at buying a business in Hamilton, and uh, we're told that we were. That was really it. We, there was no not much talk there about that. But uh, um, Marie reminds me of that every now and then that I waited till she went into the home, and then. Uh, mentioned about um, the prospect of purchasing this um, chain of stores in, in Hamilton called Selectrix. When we took over Selectrix, we ended up with three stores in Hamilton. 
One in Centre Place, one in King Street in Frankton, and one in Commerce Street in Frankton next door to Forlongs. And part of the deal, we had to take the stores and all the staff. Centre Place was prime position, but very difficult to run an appliance business out of. And we decided that we needed to get into an off-site location, one big premises, and we started talking with real estate agents, etc. And we came up with the site of the existing site of our Tristram Street store. And of course we came in here in 1997. That was a big uh, step for us. In fact, we wondered how we were going to fill that shop up. Uh, we quickly grew that store to have the highest turnover of any appliance store in New Zealand. Um, and it was looked upon as the flagship for the industry. I got involved with a chap by the name of Graham Hanna, who was attempting to get a balloon fiesta underway. And we went in as a major sponsor of that very first balloon fiesta in Hamilton. He presented to me some photographs of some character balloons. And one of the ones was, uh, was a big Frisian black and white cow, which um, was owned by a Canadian fellow. And I said to him, oh, I said, that'd be really great. I said, how much is something like that going to cost? And in a long story, I think from memory, it was around $30,000 to bring this balloon out. And I said, leave it with me. And I canvassed uh, our suppliers. And I raised the money. Uh, and the two major sponsors were Fisher & Paykel and Panasonic, which I agreed to have put on each side of the balloon. The opening day of the balloon fiesta, um, this monstrous cow went up, the biggest balloon that had ever come into the Southern Hemisphere, and it looked absolutely fantastic. It received publicity on the front page of the New Zealand Herald the next day, and I got a call from Gary Pykel, the general manager of Fisher & Pykel, he said, Grant, we've had our money's worth already. We can see what was happening um, with the base and uh, with a couple of our big competitors out there. Um, and we, we didn't get in there at the early stage, but uh, John, who was, you know, you could see that, well, we could see too, but the business was, the, the, the customers were out there and we had to, we had to be part of it. And um, big call, you know, um, this store here has always been a real, real good one and, and still is, but uh, you know, you have in the back of your mind, what are you gonna lose when, you, when you're opening up in another store only three or four k's away? But um, as it happened, it, it, we've just brought people from further afield, to, uh, further out into, into that Hamilton North because they weren't travelling through to, through to here, you know, the south of Hamilton. Well, when we first moved into uh, the base, that was the start of the global recession. We couldn't have got our timing any worse. And it was pretty di very difficult for us. Um, but we hung in there and uh, um, we knew it would come right, and it certainly has. Um, and to this day, we are still the biggest independent appliance operator in New Zealand. Probably the main thing is, is your people, is your staff. You've got to believe in them and um, not just become a fast food sort of outlet where you're selling cheap and, and roll it out, but that's the industry is there. But um, the, the after sales service, whether it be, uh, and we've seen over the years of colour television and people buying a TV or, or, or um, in the days of ECR and, and getting it home and couldn't tune it in and you know, we would do that service and go out and normally at no charge and, 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 and tune it up for them and just going that extra mile and our, our whiteware service department is um, quite intricate, our point of difference probably more than anything. You know, if you can look after who you've got and the products that you sell, 
um, I think that does, because you want your same customers coming back, you've got to look after the ones you got. Our people are critical, you know, if, without their knowledge at, at shop floor, um, we're no different than a, than a chain store. So we have to know our product better, the guys need to be able to sell up the value chain, so sell to what the actual customer wants rather than what they think they want. Um, and provide that total end-to-end -end solution, which is the key. We still run all our own delivery vehicles. There's no contracting. Um, we still install in the home, set up, whereas a lot of our competitors have moved to a supermarket mentality or a mass merchant scenario where they sell boxes um, and then the customer takes it home and has to sort it out themselves. So our philosophy is, is that solution-based selling in saying that, we want to make sure that when a customer buys a, a $5,000 UHD TV off us, that by the time we leave their home, they know how to work it, it's all set up, and they're happy with their purchase. So that's a significant point of difference. And we've always maintained that on, our, on the white west side of our business, in our air conditioning, we install our own product and also service our own product. So that's a big point of difference. No other retailer these days does that. It's very easy to fall into the trap of just uh, uh, going all out on price because the end result of that is every business has to make money and the discounter, we've seen numbers of them over the years fall by the wayside. So our point of difference is we have to be the best. And I've always used the um, saying to my staff, particularly when recruiting new staff, I'm here to try and recruit the best team. And I said, Use an example of a rugby team or a basketball team. If you've got the best players, you're going to win. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, I think Dad would be extremely proud to, um, to see after all these years that we've still got his name above the door.